So welcome to a new episode of our podcast, Vital Signs and Voices into New Earth. And today I'm very, very happy to welcome my really good friend. I want to call her soul sister too, because we have such a beautiful connection in the soul, in the heart, in the spirit, in the energy. Natalia Grace, and she comes to us today from Mexico. And we have been tuning in to the energies that we are feeling, what we call vital signs. Sometimes they are confusing and sometimes it doesn't seem to be all positive, but when we can find that vibration, that is the true message, then it's not all so hard. And we are here today to voice this aspect of truth and this aspect of resonance. So we're really wondering what is this confusion all about that we are all experience and that helplessness. So Natalia, can I bring this now to you, the signs of confusion and lost, being lost? Yeah, I love that you brought up like the voice of truth. I think that's a very big theme, truth right now. And I feel it's multi-layered also, like it's, um, it has its own frequency, right? Like for somebody, truth is on this dimension, someone else can be saying, but that's the truth, but that's the truth. And what I realize is that that's where the theme of resonance comes in, is that there will always be, I feel, a higher truth. And so for me, how I lead my life is in all times I ask myself, what is the highest truth in this moment for me? What it, Show me, like spirit, show me what is the highest truth in this interaction, in this thing, in this reality. And then that's where I feel the theme of resonance comes in, where with all this overload and overwhelm of information, I think I was just telling I was telling you this earlier that I feel blessed that I am standing right now in this time with the knowledge and the connection to myself that I have, because otherwise it would have been such a disorienting experience. Um, and that's where I feel it's very important to connect to ourselves and trust our resonance in every moment, like not let our mind or our head guide us towards that. Uh, but instead really feel like in our body, where is where is my resonance with this? Am I really resonating with this experience, with this truth? Mm. Yeah, I really love how you express that. It's We're living in multiple timelines. We're living also in multiple dimensions. Yeah. And there is a reality out there, but there's a reality inside. And then there's a reality in the cosmos on this earth. And And, and I feel what we often forget that everything is connected and we are at the end of a cycle that is actually a huge cycle in in astrology we talk about the end of the piscean age and into the aquarius age but really in all indigenous traditions in all calendars that we have we have an end of a cycle and so i really feel it is a time, as you said, coming within and trusting who we truly are, not only that persona and not only that human experience that we're actually having at this moment. So I feel we are all in this together. And it is all about finding that truth within that is not necessarily the human experience, but yet if we can't embody it right now, this truth and this resonance, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And how do you feel that this is showing up in the world, in, in, in the signs that are showing up for you with your clients in your life? How, how do you feel that, Natalia? Yeah, I'm feeling what you, you touched base also on a very important po po uh, point, the persona. I feel that is like, so important because we constantly like if we're not aware of ourselves and we're not doing the inner work we can go into constantly being subject to other people's projections of ourselves or we can be subject to what we are projecting like as a role instead of really being who we are and I think that's where things start getting a little bit enmeshed and 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 confusing as well because where the role starts happening also about 
You know, we're looking for a savior. We're looking for somebody to come and and take us from whatever we're feeling because we're not feeling the power within us. Or maybe we don't know. Maybe sometimes it's as simple as we don't know what it means to be empowered. But if we're choosing that dynamic of like, I am, I just want to be in the role playing, in the in the power power game of I need someone to come help me, heal me, fix me. I need this guru. I need whoever it is, like this entity, the government, my parent, whoever it is to tell me what my truth is. We're giving our power. We're giving our power to that. And we're going into, I feel, a karmic loop. Instead of remembering right now, like you said, it's the end of, it's a very, it's a new beginning, is that it's about sovereignty. We're here to really claim and remember that we all, each one of us, we are, we have that power. We have that power within us to change, but we have to claim it. We have to say, I don't want to play disempowered anymore. And I want to, it takes a lot of courage also, because it's going to require you to really do a lot of shadow work. And really a lot of shy, rather than just be like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I am, you know, I'm disempowered because I got th this person did this to me. Okay, perfect. Of course, hold yourself in it. We need, we, you need to feel it. You need to hold yourself in it. But after that, what do you do? This is where your, your choice is. Mm -hmm. I really love how you say that. We, we, we need to go at the moment in the shadow. We need into the unseen in that one part that really hurts. And it's not about who did it. It's neither to blame ourselves nor somebody else, but to go beyond tolerating whatever has happened, beyond accepting, because the acceptance is not the healing. The healing is the embracing. The shadow can heal when we truly embrace something that is bothering us and allow it to dissolve and transmute. And this is really the essence of this time. And funny, of course, we're recording today on the 22nd and in two days is the full moon. And the full moon is, of course, very interesting. It's in Virgo. And of course, the sun is in, in Pisces. And of course, we're leaving the Piscean age. But at the same time, Pisces is very mystic. But it hasn't been able to become sovereign. The Pisces age has not allowed us to evolve. We're still looking for the rescue, for the fix. And yet, this invitation now, just for this full moon, is allowing us to embody this mystery in the, in the Virgo, to, to kind of flow in that theme of the whole year of deconstructing, which has, has to do with shadow work, but also with rebirthing who we truly are, in courage, in trust, and of course, the way we have experienced control and power over thousands of years, not just yesterday, it is not easy for none of us to take responsibility like when you go deep into the Ho'oponopono, to take truly responsibility and not blame yourself or others. This is where the true forgiveness comes. And this is that embrace and not, I accept that somebody has been abusing me or whatever. I accept that I a mistake it's not that and so yes i i so hear you and empowerment is the step actually in consciousness before self-realization so yeah. where where does it take us yeah i i feel that i've been saying that actually responsibility and ownership is a master key in the spiritual and conscious path. Like I'm really seeing it everywhere around me. Like if we do not embody this to take ownership for our life, for the realities that we are allowing, because that's the other thing also, I feel that maybe we got we mistranslated. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but like, yeah, creating our reality. You know, I, and I feel like in, in the spiritual community, as we say, anything like we just created a reality and i get that but i feel where the mistranslation is is that if i got abused for example or harassed i feel it's very dangerous to tell somebody you created this because what happens is that they yeah they start you are actually amplifying the shame that actually comes naturally to the person that got abused 
where creating your reality happens is when you say, maybe we can say on a soul level, you know, you created this on a divine level because there was a learning. But you can't say in the moment you created this. Instead, creating your reality is when you say, okay, that happened to me. Now, what do I do about it? Mm -hmm. Why did I allow this reality? For example, in other situations, whether it's an abusive relationship or anything like that, or in the dynamic of, because, you know, the healer and the, we're witnessing that a lot also, the shaman, the student, the, the person that's coming and sitting with the shaman, like there's a lot of those power struggles if there's no awareness. Yeah. To say, why did I allow this? I really love how you say that. And, and I think it's really, the question is not incorrect, but if we ask a different question, we get a different answer. How have I chosen this and what have I, why have I chosen it? To, what to learn? What am I learning from this? It, it's a soul contract or whatever. It's not the drama. It is very interesting. We often have clients and, and people and they, they love the drama. I don't love the drama. It's not about the drama. It's about how does this drama serve you to heal? How does this drama serve you to cross over that bridge to actually learn and to graduate? And if we are looking at metaphors, which are so important also for shamanic work, in a way, it's like you're crossing over a bridge at the end of a, a cycle. It's a graduation. We are not here to just say, okay, I suffered from this, or I'm the one who was to blame, or somebody else is to blame, somebody needs to rescue me. No, it's about what am I learning? How do I graduate? More than the learning, I feel graduation is on. And that takes trust, and that takes that, takes that embodiment of the mystic that we are. The being that is beyond the persona. And that doesn't mean I reject the persona. It doesn't mean I don't love the persona. I don't embrace it. But this is not who I am. But if those two or three or whoever, how many, are not together, how can I truly graduate? We've chosen a physical experience at this time to learn and to graduate. Because if we are not physical, we actually can't do it. So how is that something to blame and to be in shame it's not that yeah so and I'm, I'm witnessing that dynamic that you mentioned like in the people that are wanting to grow you know they're looking to heal and that is where the, the differentiation is is that I for example with the people that I work with I notice that there's this subtlety of like when you're when you're tackling when you're pointing out the shadow which is where they're choosing not to change their story when they're you know that blind spot when they're still sitting in that pattern and they don't want to change it and I feel that's where it comes where it's like okay no there you go you can change it and and it's it's a process because there's all these different layers and resistances where they're in a comfort zone I feel what you spoke about, right, that uh, that initiation, I think that graduation is also, I feel like this crumbling, because I feel in that moment, it's a crumbling of everything they thought was true and untrue of their reality. And there's a lot of fear sometimes because it's like, okay, am I still going to belong? Am I still going to belong in the world as I know it? Am I still going to belong to the people around me? But actually, it's, it, that's, I feel that's the, the belief system that we've taken on that is not serving us, where we believe, okay, if we tap into who we are truly, into our light, then things will, you know, we're going to lose things. But I, I think actually on the contrary, that's where the real resonance comes in, where you start creating realities that are more in resonance with who, we, with who you are. Yeah, I love how you say that. If we truly want to be in resonance, we actually need to give up all these old programs and belief systems. The, the ego, the mental illusions. Okay, somebody lied to us. Yeah, so what? What is? What am I learning from this? You know? Uh, and it's also still about compassion. 
you know, we fall very easily then and say, oh, this is a bad person because they lied to us, so we're judging. And, and that judgment doesn't go anywhere either. It's more important to see in compassion how is it coming for somebody to lie. What, what is their agenda? What is their, I want to say, operating system and control system, you know? Do they live in survival? Do they live in fear? What is threatening them that they need to lie to us or bring us something that is not true? It is not justifying the lie. It's the compassion to, under, to see it and understand it and that it's not against me. I feel we, we often feel it's against us. We feel offended. And this is the comfort. We want to live in the comfort and the illusion that everybody loves us and the world is beautiful. And yeah. this is also the shadow. And of course, Pisces is, is what, a, what, what a sign where we actually learn to go through the shadow. Yeah. Where, where we embrace the shadow and where we're graduating. And of course, it's going into Aquarius, who is something totally different and open and all connected and not in separation. So I feel it is beautiful when we can see that all in the context and in the connectedness of everything. Yeah, that's true. And it's actually reminding me of um, just the recent, the latest video I've done about that exact point where you, you don't want to take things, you don't want to take anything personally, because no matter what actually you're doing, even if you're being the best human being for yourself, but if we're doing it in a way where we want to look in that specific way. So we're kind of project, it's more of an idea because we want to project that image of like, I'm the nice girl and the nice guy and I'm this and I'm that. The person will always, if they're not doing the inner work, they're con they will always see things from their own perspective and lens of perception. So you can be, you know, presenting yourself in that way. But if they have their own traumas, their own pains, their own perceptions of you, there will always there will be a misunderstanding between the two auras, you know, the two energy fields, and um, and it won't matter. So how they show up will have very little to do with you as well. But I think this is where also it can get like, um, and I think we spoke about this also when you were mentioning like the blaming also, you know, like oh it's it's just it's just you, but actually it's also taking looking within like why, what is my part in this. What is my part in this? But not in a way of like, and, and that's exactly not in a way of shame of like, if someone is abusing me, like, oh, like I'm the bad person. And then because you witness that, like people start going into more lack of self-confidence and that's the dynamic. But instead of saying, okay, why am I allowing this? What can I do to step more into my empowered self? Yes. And what can I learn here to become sovereign? And I feel these are all the key words that we're really talking about. Now, I want to take this today, what we have shared, into maybe your work. So I would like to let you share a little bit with us what are you actually doing with your retreats in your client work. And I will share mine too. So maybe people see, it's not about they have to work with us now, but that they see there are people out there like you and I who are actually here to be a bridge and to empower one to become sovereign and truly heal and work within without fear without blame and shame so natalia share a little bit of what you're doing now in beautiful mexico and wherever you're gonna be in the future yeah thank you i feel like for i just wanted to start by saying that what i enjoy about this and we spoke about this also is that the authenticity that i feel like when you show up like patrick i feel you're authentic and I think that's very important in the work then the work that we do is that we're not playing any of those roles. Like I consider myself a guide. Mm -hmm. I'm only a guide. I'm not here to, you know, take you out of your misery or, you know, I'm not here to fix you or give you that magic solution. I'm just here. I only literally just navigate the inner energy world. So the main work that I do is energy work. And even that evolved, and I was speaking to a little bit about this, but even that evolved because I realized that there was a point where in the beginning, I used to do also a lot of clearing. So I used to do a lot of like um, entity release and uh, cutting cords and karmic cleanse and all of that. 
But what I notice is that it's it could be present if I feel the necessity, but now it transformed into more of the shadow work, the blind spots. So I literally just navigate the energy world, the holographic field, to see where the person is still playing into those patterns, where their blind spot is, and how can they take ownership for it? How can they integrate it? I think that's been a big part also of integration. How can you integrate those parts of you that are sitting in very different dimensions? They can be in very different in other lives and other dimensions. Um, it's really accessing the quantum space. That's the energy work I call it for me is the quantum energy work because it's accessing all different layers. There's no past or future. Everything is present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And just to witness like my clients step into shift and step into that empowerment that eventually they don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important is like not getting into that dependency of like you know the the other person needs you it's like actually i'm just setting the stage for you to see your light mm -hmm. to take ownership of your shadow to own your light and then fly mm -hmm. this is yours fly along you know and so this is one dimension and um yeah one dimension of it and of course, you do retreats, you do private work with people. And I've experienced the Temascal with you in the Sacred Valley, which was, I'm not a Temascal person, I'm not a sauna person, anything like that. But that Temascal with you, and also with Nidal, it was just really, really important for me. And I notice again, how much we are connected. Yeah, if, if you would call, ask me, what am I? I'm also a guide. But I'm also that Chakaruna. So in my shamanic training that I did in New Zealand about the Peruvian um, shamanism, but of course I trained in many other things, but the, the Chakaruna is the man and the woman as a bridge. And that is like a guide. So I have nothing to fix. I have nothing to, you know, problems exist the way we're looking at them. If we change the lens, and as you said, I also feel that the energy clearing in all time spaces is, is still very important, but it is really that now we individually come into our power to truly evolve and to, to, to look really at what really blocks us, where we out of this harmonic relationship that we belong, that has to do with the cycles and has to do with the rhythms, but it also has a lot to do with the sound. So of course, we do a lot of sound work, Ceci and I, and I think people can see Ceci's monochord and my flutes are right over here, but I also use my voice and I know that you're using your voice. Yeah. And so I feel this is where we're at. This is the space where guides, we are bridges as, as a person. So you, somebody can cross over and truly become sovereign and, and have the courage to trust their resonance. So we're coming back to this vital sign. It is not about the confusion of the time. It is about that we find our truth, we find our resonance within, and not to get dependent on anyone. But like, like the metaphor with the bridge, if you have crossed over, you should be able to walk on your own. Yeah. However, if maybe there comes a map to you that you can't read, and somebody comes back to us, while well, we're gonna help them to decipher, translate and transpose that map. Because mm -hmm. energy is also transposing, like music. I feel these are the two things that we are both working in, and yes, yet in very different spaces and in different times. So yeah. I really, I'm really excited today to share that. Nobody is lost, nobody needs really rescue. Um, nobody needs to be saved. I feel it's just okay. important to connect with people like Natalia, myself, and there's many others. It's not like there's nobody out there who is willing to be either a bridge or somebody who can read your map that you can't read and, and give you that opportunity to heal within, to look at your shadow and truly graduate. Yeah. Be back into harmony. So for us, this is also very important that coming back into harmony with the cosmos. I can't yeah. fight the moon. It's like that. We can't fight these cycles also on Earth. It's not about climate change. It's about the cycles of the Earth. And so also for us, of course, I, I believe very strongly that we're shifting from the Homo sapiens and the Homo luminous, 
like many indigenous people do. And, and for me, of course, that's also a shift I need to embrace. I can't yeah. fight it. 100%. Yeah, and it's also part of the thing that I do. I offer support with people that went through their light body, which you're talking about the light body activating or other word is Kundalini for it, might not my favorite. But um, it's that it's I, I noticed that shift also is that people get disempowered, like it happened to me. It's, you know, it's hell. It's, you know, it's intent. No, it didn't happen to you. It happened for you. Exactly. And the very first thing we do, exactly. The very first thing we do in the very first layer, you got to embrace it. Exactly. And I, I understand, maybe we don't know, because surrender is also another word that's very easily used, like just surrender. But some people are like, I don't even know what that means. Okay, that's the very first step. I don't know how to embrace, I don't know how to surrender. Okay, let's get the tools for you to actually open up and surrender and embrace it. Because we're in a time of change. Yeah. We're hundred, like you said, 100% in time of change, evolution, this is happening. Truth are coming to the light, like it's just, so either we fight and we stay in that old paradigm, mm -hmm. Like, I'm helpless and I need this, you know, guru, savior, this, blah, blah, blah. or it's like, phew, no, I'm ready. I'm ready to step through. Exactly. I'm ready to step through and remember, remember, remember who I am because I forgot. Yeah. So I want to leave it like that because maybe we have more to talk about and more to share with our audience here. And I really want to thank you from my heart that you came on, that we reconnected. We've been yeah. kind of separated in space for a little bit, but this is also important for people to know the people you're really connected with, they never are away from you. Mm -hmm. We cannot disconnect. If you have a connection, you have a connection. And I would like our audience actually to talk about that and maybe share it with, with us in the comments what other things maybe you and I could talk about and how we can be these guides and bridge and map readers and all the yeah. beautiful things that we are in complementing. So you come from your side, I come from mine, but yet it's a complement. And that yeah. complement is a service that we are offering in a podcast for free, but it doesn't mean that we are not open to welcome people in our retreats and whatever else we are yeah. doing. Yeah. Yes, 100%. So, Natalia, what a pleasure. Thank you. It was that was a lot of fun. And I just want to share, I love doing this. I feel you really hold space in a way that someone's truth can come through. I really felt that. Yeah. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank so you. thank you for our audience and we catch you soon. <laughs>